so this morning I, I didn't know what to do in terms of a weekly video I've been doing it for about a year now uh, with some success uh, we just hit 200 subscribers on the last video we had 195 say hello to a little Bella but today I woke up and I realized I didn't have anything prepared I didn't know what I was gonna be talking about a versus three-way battle would be fun and I have three knives that are dress knives that are also secondary knives so let's just get to the review table and get it done so first of all I will tell you what three, three knives are and what they have in common so this is the Protec Sprint it's an automatic knife under two inches uh, made in California by Protec pretty sweet little knife I have a full review on my channel secondly this is a case Barlow it is a two bladed knife I made here in uh, the United States this is a Barlow blade and it actually has a pen blade as well it's a traditional slip joint and then this one is a frame lock flipper not it's a it's a frame lock uh, kind of knife uh, in titanium and this is made in Taiwan by Spyderco it is very high end and it's the most expensive knife on the table right now and what they have in common is that they are three gentlemanly carries around the two inch mark this is a little bit over two inches this is a tiny little bit over two inches and this is a little tiny bit under two inches but what they have in common is they are three gentlemen carries that are on the small end of the spectrum. Uh, what they don't have in common is they are very different in price. This is around 50 bucks. I'll put the MSRP right here. This is around 100 bucks. Put the MSRP there. This is around 200 bucks. MSRP right there. They double in value each time. That's that's the big difference well there's a lot of big differences but what I want to get done today when I want to explain today what I want you to know today is which one you should carry as a secondary or gentleman's carry because that's a choice I have to make every day first off let's go by blade uh, functionality so that's a big deal for me with a secondary blade let's start with the sprint so in the sprint case it has a kind of a thicker stock this stock is used on larger knives with taller grinds uh, in this case is a saber grind that just goes up to there and so it's not really thin behind the edge you can get a lot done you can cut out um, cardboard boxes you can open up envelopes you can open packages clamshell packages uh, but like if you have an apple that you want to eat and you want to use your secondary blade because your primary blade is dirty because you used it for something dirty um, this is not gonna be very helpful however for everything else you gotta do open up envelopes you know get your paychecks etc etc get open up more knives this is gonna be good to go so from good to go we'll score them from like okay good to go and great right so this is good to go it isn't great for a secondary blade for a primary blade it's actually okay but for secondary get, uh, blade is good to go. Now if we go over to the case, the case actually has um, an additional blade which gives you uh, additional advantages. For example, in the case that you do want to cut up a, an apple or an orange or whatever um, and your primary blade is dirty. Okay, Let's say you did something dirty. Uh, you pull out your secondary blade to cut that sandwich in half or whatever this thing is super thin behind the edge has a thin stock and is very functional but now you cut a bread right and or whatever but now that one's dirty so now you go through the day with two dirty blades there's no sinks anywhere to clean them and voila you still have a clean blade which is something cool so you still have pr pr uh, food prep abilities you can still open up envelopes uh, boxes, clamshell packages, uh, obviously secondary blades, gentlemanly carries are not going to be good for survival, so I'm not even commenting on that, guys. Okay, let's keep this PG-13. Let's keep this within the realm of possibility as of a day-to-day -day basis for a secondary blade. Now, your primary blade, you can be whatever you want. Currently, my primary blade, because it's Saturday and it's a very casual day, I'm carrying the PM3 Lightweight, which is also a smaller knife but it's not gentlemanly and I don't consider this a secondary blade I uh, because I think it's capable of being a primary blade anywho let's keep going so in the terms of the case knife um, 
as of blade functionality, I think it's great. Blade functionality wise. Uh, for a secondary, again, for a secondary uh, knife. And in terms of the techno, you're not going to do any freaking apple cutting. Uh, you could cut up an orange. You could cut up a sandwich. Um, I think this one is within that realm of, you know, good to go. But, and you know, not great. Uh, it opens nicely and all that. But we're talking about blade functionality only. Uh, having this curve right here when you put your finger makes it really good for drawing cuts having this thing right here you can sharpen up your uh, pencil or construction pencil whittle if you need to uh, the only thing is just not slicey enough to call it a um, a good overall secondary blade because um, I carry a secondary blade to keep it clean and do more fragile uh, cuts maybe I, I like apples and I like cutting them I don't like biting into them I don't know why. Secondly, when it comes to a secondary blade, uh, carryability is important for me. I need to be able to throw it in my coin pocket or my fifth pocket of my jeans. Uh, all of these knives do a great job writing in there. Um, so they all get a, a score of great on there. Uh, I will mention that uh, the Barlow does not have a pocket clip. But the way I carry it, it doesn't need it. The way I carry it, it's just like that, just right on my pocket. I'm not doing any ninja cartwheels, so it's not falling off or anything. I've been carrying this for quite a while. It is going to stick in my collection for quite a while, probably forever. And yeah, I have no problem carrying this in my comb pocket. It, again, this is a thing for secondary gentleman carry knives. This is not, you know, your overall thing. When I carry this, or any of this, I carry a different freaking pocket knife on me. If you're not interested in secondary blades uh, and you want to carry this as a main, I suggest you carry it in your fifth pocket because it's ready. Uh, it's readily available. You can pinch it out. So if you were thinking about this one as your secondary because it's the most affordable, it's freaking pretty, and it has two blades, I suggest you carry it there. You can buy a slippy for it, like a leather slippy, but... You're still having to have. You're still gonna have to dig it out of your pocket, and you're still gonna have to dig it out of the slip. What I'm doing is just that fifth pocket, and it's readily available. It's uh, right there. You're not gonna cut yourself. These things don't come open. You just go right in there. You pull it out, and you're good to go to use it throughout the day. That's all I have to mention. If I have to be really nitpicky, I think the best one. Uh, would be the sprint in terms of carryability because it's the thinnest, lightest, uh, and it has a pocket clip. So if you want to put it in a different pocket, maybe you don't have a fifth pocket clip, you can still carry this one and it would be readily available. Second place would be the Techno, and it pulls out of your pocket really nice and it has an incredibly cool pocket clip. However, I, the sprint would still win some pocket clips. Thirdly, it would be ergonomics or like the way it just feels in your hand when you're using it or fidgeting, etc, etc. So we're going to start with the Techno now. We'll go the other way. So in terms of the Techno, it is great ergonomics. Spyderco is the best. Well, I guess that's a little controversial, but I don't know. Send me a knife. Prove me wrong. So these freaking ergonomics, uh, the, 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 the pinky really just falls off so it doesn't have anything to do with this gripitude but the other three fingers just dig in there and then they feel comfortable yeah there's a little hot spottiness back here it's a little bit square but it is just good to go in terms of ergos in terms of fidgetude look at how just drum shots right on your nail in terms of fidgeting this knife is great um you can spidey flick it too some people can't but they kind of suck uh, and then you can roll it slowly. In terms of fidgeting, in terms of uh, just ergos and the way it feels in your hand, this thing is amazing. We're going to call it great. Uh, we're going to move over uh, on the bar though. I'm going to put fidgeting and moving the knife like this as part of ergonomics because it's part of the way how it feels in your hand. It's part of the way you handle the knife. So, yeah, it's part of it. So, in, in terms of ergos and playing with the knife and fidgeting etc uh, the Barlow is also up there in the grate I've been enjoying this at work lately a lot and now the sprint 
So this is great, this is great. So the sprint, right? So in terms of the sprint, when I'm in the car, I still freaking deploy it and undeploy it with one hand. I just use my steering wheel. As I'm driving down the freeway, shh, that's a secret. Don't tell anybody. Uh, so in terms of uh, just ergos and handling the knife, this is probably the worst. It's still good to go. Um, but if my hand feels empty, uh, I know that the Tegno doesn't have a pinky grip either, but it just my hand just feels less empty. This one's good to go for secondary blade. I, I, you can probably use it all day to cut out, down boxes. So you can still use it all day. It's just that these two are so great that they make this one look bad. And, and plus the, uh, the action on this thing is freaking amazing. Uh, so I'm just gonna be fair and call it great as well because it's it's super great but just in terms of versus these two I think these two ergos and handling are better for me now it's aesthetics if you're gonna be a gentlemanly uh, guy and a gentleman in the carry you're gonna care about aesthetic in my opinion these are all great these are all part of my permanent ish collection I know the sprint isn't going nowhere I know the Barlow isn't going nowhere and I know the techno is not going on nowhere unless like I'm in a pinch and I need money and then this one's gonna go because this one's the most valuable and we'll get to pricing and, and, and value in a little bit so in terms of aesthetics not everybody's gonna be a fan of the Barlow but I think it's good to go uh, we'll start with the Barlow today because we've been li leaving him in the middle this whole time you know it's red bone it's carved it looks kind of weird in camera in person it looks great uh, some people may like it, some people may not. This is, I think, the most, uh, not ugly, but just the least appealing for the masses. In my opinion, it looks great, and I've been taking some sick Instagram pictures. By the way, I'm doing, uh, I'm going live every day until Christmas. Uh, today's number, day number seven. So, if you're going to pop in, say hi, go ahead. Um, but, uh, yeah, great little knife. I'm going to call it good to go, because I think it's good to go. I think you should look more into it. Sick knife. Pretty cheap. Uh, so I'm going to call it good to go. Now for the Techno. I think it's aesthetically pleasing. I think a lot of people like it over on Instagram. Aesthetically. Uh, most people are going to complain about the thumb studs. But you can you know take it off and, and redo it if you want to. And some people are doing just sick things with the Techno in terms of aftermarket stuff. But uh, in terms of aesthetics, uh, I think it's great. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. So I'm going to put it in the great. Now, undeniably, I think the Protex Sprint is the most aesthetic knife on the table. Uh, it, it, it really is. From afar, it just looks classy. It looks good. That's why I call even though it's a, a, an automatic, that's why I call it a gentlemanly knife. Because it's just aesthetic. This thing... Needs a tie and some shell leather dress shoes. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. Everything's just chamfered, well done. Everything's recessed. Everything's polished. Everything's been thought about. Uh, uh, no, like, the gaps are just perfect. The lining up of everything is just extremely nice. The blade is dressy with the stone wash and the satin and the little swedge at the top. and. I mean, it's just a gorgeous knife. So in terms of aesthetics, this one's good to go. This one's great. This was great plus one. In my opinion, you know, this this thing is one of the coolest looking knives of all time. All right, as of Amazon, this thing is almost 60 bucks. Um, you can get some for 40 depending on the scale material. This is red bone, like I said earlier. So it'd be more like 60 um, in terms of 60 mm, like it is good to go I would buy another one I'd buy the blue one uh, for 60 I mean this thing is fucking sick um, so yeah but it's good to go not not great if it was f if the red bones were 50 and they had like a cheaper material in, f in, in the low 40s it'd be great but their cheaper material skills is in the 45 ish uh, and you kind of want this, you know, cooler stuff like Smooth My Card and stuff. But those are like 70. 
So it's good to go in terms of value, in my opinion, because you're getting just carbon steel, you know, pinned construction. It is made in America, which is not okay. It's good to go. I recommend this. If you got the money and you're looking at it and you're like, dang, that's hot, just freaking get one. Good to go. These are all good to go and great because they're part of my permanent collection, guys. They're not just some knife some guy sent me. You know, they're 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 like good to go. Uh this is a hundred bucks, hundred and ten dollars. And depending on the iteration, like if you have a coating on it is more expensive, which I think the satin and stone wash is better than the coating. So this is a hundred and ten bucks. In terms of $110, you're getting a ProTech, you're getting an automatic, you're getting full aluminum construction, you're getting um, made in America, you're getting fit and finish that's, you know, up there with a lot of zero tolerance and above, reality, stuff like that, and you're getting it for 100 bucks. I mean, sure, it's small, but you're still getting S35DN, you're still getting American made, you're still getting um, in the upper echelons of fit and finish. Uh, I think it's good to go and I think I'm willing to say that it's great because you need to experience ProTech as a company and if you can do it for a hundred dollars I think you did yourself a favor now we're gonna move over so this is good to go this is great and now we're gonna go for the techno so in terms of the techno you're getting a titanium frame lock um, with a Stonewash CTS XHP made in Taiwan, fit and finish is ridiculous. Now nah, the blade centering is good to go. Um, all the screws are, are recessed. Everything was thought about. Everything is chamfered. There was a a blastus finish on the titanium, etc., etc. You get some anodizing back here. You get all this from Spyderco, one of the best companies for making knives out there. But I think it's good to go. If you would have asked me a month or two ago, I would have said um, that it was great. But today I'm saying it's good to go because you can get a chef for around the same price and you get more knife. And you get a more exotic um, blade. CTS XHP is good to go. It's one of the coolest knife steels out there uh it's great it's a great knife but um value wise as of today i think is good to go especially looking at the um secondary market when they drop in value um, for quite a bit where this and this don't really drop you know over 20 percent um yeah i think it's good to go so let's just add it all up and see what happened the score comes out like this uh the bar gets three great the sprint gets four great and the techno gets four great so technically it is a tie between these two and that's not bashing on this guy this guy is doing great um i recommend um you get a slip joint if you haven't gotten one yet especially made in america especially uh with some bone because i mean come on you know you got aluminum you got titanium you got g10 you got frn and now you got bone that's pretty cool However, I am not the type of guy to leave it at a tie. So we're gonna come up with a bonus round. Right now, imprompt, let's go. Hey, which one you like? Which one you like more? Pick one. Take one. The techno? The techno? So as you can see, Bella picked the techno um, so in terms of uh, <laughs> so in terms of a gentleman carry, the techno wins because Bella knows how to choose her gentleman. Um, no, yeah, and and it's a tie, but in my heart, if I lost both of these, which one would I rebuy? And I think I would go with the Sprint, just because this one's hard to find used, and it's it's brand new. It's kind of expensive, and I can just buy this one new. So. Yeah, in terms of just gentlemanly carry, this is going to be my pick. Um, it's just super classy. And, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. So, the sprint comes out the freaking goat. And if you guys want me to do something like this again, let me know down in the comments. However, I am working on a top five 
top loader and on Monday I'm getting a Spyderco smock so I'm gonna be reviewing that probably Saturday and you know I'll carry it Monday to Friday and Saturday and then review it and let you guys know how I feel if I need an extra day for testing I'm gonna do it on Sunday but thank you guys for watching all the way to the end please remember to like subscribe comment and yeah thank you guys for coming coming uh, hashtag today's pocket tools we're over 200 posts now of awesome great people using the hashtag and today's live mess day seven